Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All right, everybody's calm down. All of our guests today, including Marty Baron standing by, brought to you by the Waddling Dog Pub, one of Victoria's favorite local watering holes, located 10 minutes from the ferry terminal. The Waddling Dog Pub is the place to be for great food, cold drinks, and all summer sports action. With their dog-friendly patio, a new summer menu, and music poker Saturdays. You're good at that, uh, Oh. Frank. Everyone is welcome at the Waddling Dog Pub. Don't miss their fully stocked liquor store and 30-room boutique hotel attached. Countless reasons to come, sit, and stay at the Waddling Dog. The Leafs have themselves a, a new goaltender in, in Matt Murray. Uh, George Ev now with the Colorado Avalanche. Yep. So with that in mind, in free agency uh, tomorrow, at least it opens up tomorrow, we thought we'd bring in from TSN and Sabres broadcasts on MSG, Marty Biron. Marty, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. I uh, I think I already have a headache for what's about to happen tomorrow, so I better hydrate <laughs> and uh, take a couple of Advils. <laughs> you know what, no Marty? Kidding. I didn't hear a word you you said because I'm looking at the background here. That is just mm -hmm. absolutely uh, tremendous. Can you go through every mask for us, if you don't mind? <laughs> Uh, I, I can. It's going to be quick. I'm just so kidding. The top okay. one here. Yeah. I, this is uh, when I was 15 years, no, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it goes on through the end of my career with the Rangers. So uh, I'm only missing, well, three really on the wall. Uh, the one that I got stolen out of my car when I was playing with the Buffalo Sabres. So that was years ago. <laughs> my Flyers one and my Islanders one. Not that those were stolen, but the Flyers I repainted it in Islanders, oh. Oh. and that one doesn't have a cage on, and it didn't work because it would have been 11 masks, and I wanted a, an even number. You got a mask stolen out of your car. Were you visiting Vancouver at the time, Marty, by any chance? <laughs> uh, no, but pretty close, uh, Montreal. Oh, so okay. I was getting ready for the 2003-2004 uh, season. I went to Montreal for a, uh, a goalie prep camp with Francois mm. Allaire, who's the goalie guru that I used to work with. And I parked at the hotel the next day. My car was gone and everything in it was gone as well. So um, I got my equipment back. Somehow mm. a good Samaritan found my equipment. Found my equipment. I don't oh. know how that happened, right? <laughs> but um, the mask wasn't in it. So I figured a little keepsake for the good Samaritan probably in his basement. Yeah, the good Samaritan's playing beer league with your mask on. Possibly, Thanks. possibly. But at least I got my equipment back uh, two weeks before the season was starting. <laughs> Love the stories. Hey, um, you went on record, and I think I'm safe in, in, in asking you this or, or telling people this, but you went on record on, on Twitter saying that you're not the biggest Matt Murray fan in the world, and we all know that yeah. Matt said no to the Buffalo Sabres <laughs> in the trade around uh, draft week. What will Matt Murray do for the Toronto Maple Leafs now that he's, he's going there? Well, uh, I mean, obviously he's hoping to uh, give his career a boost and, and come back to a, maybe a more of a familiar uh, setting with Cal Dubas, Sheldon Keefe. Obviously, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds connection is strong over there. Uh, but I just look, I know it's been a couple of tough year, years for Matt Murray uh, personally and on the ice. So um, I, I hope that he bounces back, but I just don't see it. It's nothing personal. It's about the, 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 the product on the ice. And I just don't see Matt Murray having evolved the way that the league has evolved with the way the goaltenders have evolved. Hmm. Look at Vasilevsky, look at Shesterkin, look at Merzlikens, look at all these goalies that are kind of, you know, performing at a high level. And, and you can throw in Patrick Demko in Vancouver and you could throw in Sergey Bobrovsky to a certain extent and all these higher end goaltender, what they have is they have flexibility, athleticism, mm. they move well and quick, they fight for every puck. I see Matt Murray as a very stiff, structured goaltender, uh, but there's not anything else other than that. So um, I don't think it works in the NHL anymore, especially with the quality of competition. So I, I'm, I'm concerned for the Leafs. Uh, I actually love what Ottawa was able to do. When Matt Murray said no to the Buffalo Sabres, it started a chain of event that they used a seven pick to trade for Alex DeBrinkett. They ended up mm. trading Matt Murray to Toronto. It worked out better for Pierre Dorian than trading Murray to Buffalo because I thought that was a bad trade for Ottawa having to give up the seven pick to flip to 16. So I think it worked out better for Ottawa. Um, 
do you believe that Alex Georgiev is a fit in Colorado? We're sticking with goaltenders here, uh, Marty, if you don't yeah. mind. Um, yeah, I think he's a good fit in Colorado. Why? Because it's not going to be all on him. It's going to be him and Pavel Francouz. So both Georgiev and Francouz are going to play, see who's got it. I give one of the two maybe a run after 25, 30 games to see if they can be a number one. And uh, I always thought Georgiev was a good goaltender. What happened in New York is two things. Once, I mean, we all know the Tony D'Angelo incident where Georgiev and D'Angelo got into it. Um, I don't know if there is some off-ice issues with Georgiev when it comes to temper. He's a hot-headed goaltender. I don't know if that leaked into the locker room. That's one. And two, I thought he was the heir apparent to Henrik Lundqvist. It just so happened that a guy named Igor Shesterkin, who just won the Vesna, flew right by Georgiev and took the job. And, and listen... Who wouldn't, right? Gior uh, Georgiev is good, but Shesterkin is fantastic. So uh, to me, it just ran its course, and the Rangers saw value, and Georgiev wanted to go somewhere, and I think Colorado is going to be a good fit for him. Marty, one more on the goaltending, because something's going to happen in Edmonton. We know that Mike Smith is out. Jack Campbell could end up there. Talk about Campbell. He's not going to go back to Toronto. Uh, uh, talk about him on the free agent market. Now, listen, I am a fan of Jack Campbell, the person. Again, I think he's a great individual. Everybody loves him. And I'm, I'm not opposed to him as a goaltender. I think he plays an older style of hockey, a little bit like Marty Brodeur used to do. Never makes two saves the same. One is a kick save. One is a two-pass stack. Um, but he battles. He battles hard, and he makes saves. And the first half last season was incredible. Then, obviously, he ran some into some injury issues. Um, and I don't know that he was fully 100% by the end of the season in the playoffs either. So I look at Jack Campbell, I think, if fully healthy, can give you some good games, but he won't play 65 games. Yeah. I don't even think he can play 60. I think you got to consider Campbell for 50, and you need to find somebody for 30 games. So uh, the Oilers, I mean, is that Stuart Skinner? Maybe it is, but I think if they go Jack Campbell, they better have a, a good backup in place to help him along. Okay, free agency, you talked about it right off the bat. There could be some, well, there's going to be big names moving here soon. we got Malkin, Caudry, Evander Kane's out there. He's not going to go back to Edmonton, it doesn't look like. Marty, it's, it's the silly season. Are you expecting some stupid contracts tomorrow? Why well, we always have to expect stupid contracts when it comes to a free agency. Now, Johnny Gaudreau, and I think yeah, that was Frank Cervalli reported on Twitter and many others, that uh, there's a new offer on the table that takes it to $80 million. I wow. mean, wow. Like if that's eight times 10 and he says no to that, uh, how do you get $80 million anywhere else over yep. seven years? Well, that's yep. 11 plus, right? And so the word is, is if he says no to Calgary, it's not going to be about the money because it looks like the offer's on the table. So I think there is going to be some, some good money being offered up, but most importantly, what the teams had to do to open up cap space. No qualifying offer to some really good players in the National Hockey League. You look at Dylan Strom and, and many others. Um, buyouts with a lot of players as well to free up some cap space. So I think we're going to see the top guys get a lot of money and then a lot of middle guys fighting for what's left. And that's unfortunate, but that's the way a cap world works. Yeah. Uh Marnie, you're close with the Buffalo Sabres situation. They, had dra they drafted, I believe it's 11 players last week. They yes. have four picks in the uh, first two rounds next year. Uh, they've got uh, Darlene, Power, Thompson, some great young players uh, there. Do you like the direction the Sabres are finally heading? I do. I think it's, uh, it's the right direction now. You look around the Buffalo Sabres, I think Ottawa got better. Detroit got better, especially in net. And then, you, yeah. you know, Steve Eisenman is always one to do a lot of good mm -hmm. things when it comes to free agency and trying to win. Um, so do I think that's enough for the Buffalo Sabres for the season? Maybe not. Now, I think they're on the right path. You look at their top four defense are 23 and under. Yeah. It's Dalene, Matias Samuelson, Owen Power, and Henry Yokiaru. Mm. They're, they're, not one of them is older than 23 years old. And when they played together in the last few games of the season, they look really, really good. Up front, you got Tage Thompson at center. That had a breakout year. Jeff Skinner had a good season. Uh, you know, you got Peyton Krebs, Dylan Cousins. You got Jack Quinn and J.J. Paterka coming from Rochester. There's a lot of good... Um, prospects and younger players to move forward. Is that get you in the playoffs this year, though? 
I don't think it does. I think you're right on the cusp of it, mm. but I don't think it makes you into the playoff picture in the Eastern Conference. So, uh, and in that, obviously, I think they're just waiting to see what happens with Devin Levi. We know Devin Levi did great at the World Juniors two years ago, did great at Northeastern last year, but going back to school, uh, Eric Portillo at Michigan, going back to school, they drafted a uh, Finnish goalie in the second round, uh, uh, Topias uh, Leninen. Um, he's good, but it's four or five years down the road. So goaltending may be a, a bit of an emphasis for the next couple of years here. Marty, one more, if, if you don't mind. And yeah. we've had a couple of people in our Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox asking us to ask you uh, this question. You reeled off all the best goaltenders in the National Hockey League. None of them are Canadian. You mentioned Dev Devin Levi. Uh, he yeah. he yeah. is Canadian. What can you tell us? What What's your opinion of the state of Canadian goaltending right now? Well, I think it's like everything else. It goes in waves, right? I mean, I look at my own province of Quebec, and we used to have all the yep. goalies. We yep. had three first-rounder from the province of Quebec my year. Yep. It was Jean-Sebastien Jaguar, myself, and Mark Denny. Brian Boucher was American, played in the OHL, but was drafted in the first round as well. Uh, but I think with Sweden... Russia, Finland is doing to develop goaltenders. The uh, the resources they've put in, uh, in in goalie training, not just on the ice, off the ice, mental training and all of it, uh, I think it's gone a long way. But I do think that they are kind of making a, a bounce back. I see a lot of really good young Canadian goaltenders that need development time. And the problem is that you know, everybody's trying to rush everything. At 17, you should be starting in major juniors because you need to get drafted. Well, I don't think at 17, you're ready to start in major junior. And by age 20, you have to sign your pro contract or play American League because you're done. Well, college, they can be 22 and 23 and have longer to develop. In Europe, they can be 22 and 23 and have longer to develop. I think there's a that's the problem I feel with everything that has to do with Canadian hockey, but mostly with goaltenders. We don't give them enough time to develop. Mm. And by the age 20, they're either pro or they're done playing hockey. And I think that's too young. Yep. The winner of the best mass competition, by the way, for me, is your tribute to Gilles Graton. You, when you were with the Rangers, yeah, because oh, he was one that. of the first one of the first goaltenders to come out with a crazy looking mask back in the wow. day. Wow. Nice. Outstanding. Yeah, that, uh, that's what I did for the Winter Classic. Now, I'll tell you this. This is one of my favorite here. My Rochester Americans mask. Nice. That was the uh, American flag for the Americans. I copied it with the Rangers, a couple of them on my uh, left there. So, uh, yeah, th those are my two favorites, I think. Nice. Beautiful. So nice. Above and beyond, uh, Marty. Thanks so much. Have a great summer, my friend. Thanks so much for this. Enjoy free agency. Ab absolutely. Thanks, guys.